welcome to Quartz Light, your car brochure channel, and today's episode, the Bedford CF. <laughs> Welcome back and course like if you don't know we look at car brushes from around the world here on YouTube three times a week Today like I say the Bedford CF another commercial vehicle interestingly on Monday We looked at a commercial vehicle as well. This is not really what the channel is about We don't just look at commercial vehicles in generally they're usually passenger vehicles, but yeah occasionally we do drift into commercial vehicles because you know they really do bring back the memories particularly the liveries and the liveries in this particular brochure are extremely good so it is a nice little example of 70s uh, vans in the uk so if that sounds like it would interest you please consider subscribing so the bedford cf first introduced in 1969 they're really to compete against the Ford Transit it was very similarly sized and the Transit was already doing very well and the Bedford CF did indeed do extremely well itself it soon became a very popular site on Britain's roads today's brochure is from 1976 so let's have a look at that now so there we go, the first glimpse of this brochure, clearly you're saying Bedford CF range at the top and the Bedford CF was there actually to replace the Bedford CA. Like I say, very good liveries on this particular brochure, you can really see that British gas livery of the 70s uh, bringing back, I'm sure, a few memories to some of us. Um, there's also seemed to be a bit of a dealer stamp on there, so we should have a quick look at that as well. It's not perfect, it's a little bit smudged, isn't it? But there is Pontifract. Um, it looks like Southgate garages. So that's always a little bit of interesting bit of history. And I've just quickly flicked over to the back page showing the you know the Bedford uh, little badge, you know your familiar Vauxhall badge and your GM badge, and you can see the date stamp down the bottom there, 276 mean February. 1976 so let's have a look inside the brochure and as we straight away see we can see some of these liveries which will certainly zoom in at a moment and you can see the various different um, options you have similar to a Ford Transit really lots of different options for this van it's telling us there's five basic models the CF220, 250, 280, 340 and 350. Um, let's have a zoom in at some of these pictures. So we can straight away sort of see this sort of box van on a you know a chassis. One of the many options. SBA. I don't remember them at all. The men of many parts. I don't recognise that at all. Um, perhaps we should zoom in on what area that's in. Can't quite zoom in very well on this, but you can see it's Leicester. Anyone from Leicester remember them? We can also have a look at the badging, I guess, as well. Again, it's not a very clear shot on this one. I've probably be able to find a better picture, but um, it's basically this in the middle. Well, in fact, let's find a better picture. There you go. You can see sort of the Vauxhall badge and the Bedford wording to one side. Um, if we draw that back, this is probably a more familiar image, these sort of Philips vans, both in you know a sliding door and this sort of like mini bus setup. And indeed it does actually mention some of the places here. Uh, CF chosen by important people, uh, among them British Gas, British Rail, Cabri Sweps, Curries, Daily Express, Daily Mail, GC, GKN, Server Warm. Uh, London Carriers, William Press, Unigate and WD and H.O. Wills. So just a few little ideas, a few little shout out to some of the companies that use these. Um, and, and I'm sure impressed the people that use them to continue buying them. But of course, Transit also used a lot of these uh, as well. 
and then it gives you some of the options telling us which type of van like a 220 or a 250 the wheelbases the payloads etc i'm not going to go through it in too much detail but we might as well have a look at it while we're here um, but you can certainly see like the transit um, there were very many different options available depending on what your needs as a business were and then this next page gives us this lovely image of all these different liveries and compares the different models so we've got the 220s and the 250s on this side opposite side the 280s and the 340s so kind of like different with things like you know different wheelbases different payloads um, probably even different engines and gearboxes we'll have a look at more of that really at the end because there is a specification page it's probably easier to see the differences in the specifications at the end rather than trying to read through all this but we'll certainly zoom in on some of these images if we sort of the base models the 220 and the 250 this white one a very plain van can't make out the livery at all on that one but this one very clearly dale hire on this bedford cf must be some kind of hire company um and i don't know if we can make out the address i don't i don't recognize dale hire at all maybe somebody can oh there we go scarborough if anyone recognizes that one from that area if we zoom back out again um this is obviously much more familiar to all of us dino rod of course um, you can clearly see this big sort of sliding door and at the bottom again um, one i don't recognize that some of a higher company so they are the smaller vans the 220s the 250s there is a bit of a write-up at the side here so the 220 using a 1759 petrol uh, with a Bedford four speed all synchromatic mesh overdrive optional or GM automatic, which is optional. Um, or there's a 2279cc petrol uh, with a GM automatic or a 1770cc diesel with a Bedford four speed synchro mesh gearbox. And on the larger one, the 250, that has got the 2279cc or the 1770cc diesel and then we get to the larger ones the 280s and the 340s starting off the, this uh, larger um, pickup bed uh, bedford cf some kind of engineering company i don't recognize it can we make it out boovem engineers never heard of them <laughs> and then we've got sort of an over, overhead shot here of one and then this uh, black one can we make what that's saying dove swing by the looks of it not heard of that either clearly see that it's you know white on the inside and just been painted black on the outside and you also notice with these no sort of like chrome bumpers they're just all painted white and another bit of a company there that i can't make out again just quickly sprayed over red and still white on the inside and then it gives you a little bit of an idea of the engines and gearboxes on these larger vans then we get what it's calling the the bedford cf 350 and he's telling us this is the latest addition to the CF range. Um, and it gives us some more little pictures of their sort of uses. So again, a, a larger van and pickup. And also the engines and gearbox with this particular version. And then we get the special bodied vehicles, which I'm sure um we recognize from things like ice cream vans etc but in this case it looks like thames valley service um some kind of delivery service there and this one that's been used and converted as a minibus interestingly i don't think i remember seeing bedford cf uh, minibuses and then um another variation of the pickup and indeed at the side it does give us some ideas 
of the different layouts, you know, from like from camper vans to little mini bus buses, etc., etc. But you know, they would make a good camper as well, I guess. Um, and then ended with this sort of like removal van uh, type um, vehicle. Then we get a look at the uh, uh, cab of the CF. Very interesting little layout, isn't it? Um, and it says on the um, in its standard form, the CF cab combines functional efficiency with excellent comfort and ease of driving. In its deluxe form, it has even more comfort, um, etc., etc. Um, interesting to know. I've never driven a Bedford CF, although I have driven many different transits. I wonder which one was the better. Maybe jot that in the comments if you draw both. Was it nicer to drive a CF or was it nicer to drive a transit? There's also a, another nice little image of that interior. I certainly think the interior looks a little bit more interesting than a transit actually. Um, but like I say, that's only my point of view. It then starts talking about you know load space and really that's what these vans are all about and it gives you a little bit of a table about some of the load space on the 220s, 250s and then the 280s and 340s. Like the, the, van, the transit van, different door options um, could be tailored to whatever your needs were um, and it shows it short you can have a sliding door or a regular door and uh, various different doors configured how you wanted it to be and it's sort of given this choice of five different arrangements you know hinged or sliding and this rather nice example and this is often obviously been factory painted in yellow this time yellow on the inside and the outside a few of the different door options there then as we turn the page the brochure starts talking about um, the engines this case the petrols the two options the 1759 cc or the 2279 cc petrol units i'm not going to read all this but i guess if you really wanted to you could pause the screen at this time and have a look at that in a bit more detail and then we'll move down here it talks about the diesels as well Again, two options, your 1770cc diesel Perkins and your 2524cc and diesel Perkins. Again, I guess if you wanted to, you could pause that if you wanted to read all that. We just don't have time to go through it in great detail. And then it, what it refers to as the job matched gearboxes. So the different options for each individual model. And then when we move down, there's a nice little cutaway of a GM automatic, optional with all petrol engines, and uh, a Bedford four-speed all synchronized gearbox, and a ZF5 speed all synchronized gearbox. So nice little detailed little images there. When we go over to the next page, I'm instantly reminded of these Bedford CF ambulances, a very iconic image whether you saw them on the road or even in sort of like british um programs in the uh, based in the 70s you know there were always bedford cf ambulances in them it tells a little bit about road holding and handling i'm not going to go through too much detail in that but um, this is a nice little image of the layout of the vans then it all gets quite technical and quite difficult really to show on a, a, a brochure review video really but these are the dimensions starting off um, with the smaller the 220s and the 250s um, I'm not sure if you can possibly you could make that out I'm not going to go through all this um, but um, there are the dimensions for the smaller vans and then we move down we get the dimensions for the larger 280s and 340 Bedford CFs. Same sort of story for the chassis cabs, the 220s and 250s, again the dimensions. And 
and the 280 and 340s. And then finally, we get um, these 350s. Again, you know, pause the screen if you do want to look at them figures, but really we don't have time to go in any great detail there. Then we get to the specifications and weights. Again, I'm not going to go through this in great detail. I'm also going to stay away from playing music. I know some of the people don't like that. Um, interesting on this side though, it says a luxury driver's seat with height and rake adjustment. Nice to have a little bit of adjustment on a uh, van seat at this time, I must admit. So this is the 220s and the 250s. If we move down, we get the uh, 280s, 340s and 350s. Just about make that out, I think. Um, can I see this little image as well? The GM automatic floor mounted lever. How many automatics they were? I can only remember these vans as being manuals, but I guess I didn't really drive one of them. But um, that is an example of the automatic. Hopefully, you can just about make out the dimensions if you do want to see all that information. And then um, we'll have a look on the opposite page. It's showing all the weights for the various models. So the, the weights of the uh, 220s, either petrol or diesel. The 250s, again, either petrol or diesel. And then on the opposite side, the 280. the 340 and indeed the 350 and then it gives us sort of this nice little list of all the standard equipment again if you do want to read all the standard equipment available you could pause the screen and read that to yourself if you wanted to um, and then moving down uh, talk about the chassis cab uh, this is quite interesting isn't it at the bottom here a van interior light included in the deluxe package so oh, if you want a light inside you have to go for the deluxe I'm afraid and vans in the 70s were indeed very basic continues here talking about um, the chassis cab and the chassis cowl and indeed we've even got the uh, deluxe vans and chassis caps so the special deluxe option package includes vinyl headlining foam insulation foam backed vinyl engine cowl um, cover sound deadening floor insulation special luxury dashboard trim interior lamp at rear of van body padded interior trim pads and armrest hinge cabs only chromed front bumpers there you go you could get one with chrome front bumpers we can we know we can identify the deluxe by that now and chromed rear quarter bumpers on van models chrome bumpers all around that's nice i think if you really did like your employees you would pick the deluxe because the ones without any sort of like a sound deadening would surely be quite a noisy vehicle and then we've got some optional equipment you know the different windows etc um, and it's also saying we've also got a uh, paint finish in a choice of colors and then this painted uh, rear quarter bumpers you can also see how it's badged at the back there and a two-man passenger seat optional on vans and chassis cabs oh there you go so you could actually get three people in there with that option and a little bit about the warranty plus and on the back page we get a van in this shepherd construction i don't know it seems familiar i can't definitely say i remember that but it seems familiar somehow and at the top there it starts talking about the colors so it says all cfs except chassis cow models are available in a choice of low cost factory finished colors your dealer will be pleased to give you a full details 
Alternatively, vans and chassis cabs can be ordered in primer for subsequent painting in operators' own colour scheme. So that's interesting. You know, you could you could pick more than just a white van, interestingly, but even though I, I think most CFs were white. Um, or you can just say, you know, send it to me in the primer, obviously saving some money, and then you can get your own uh, body shop and to spray it up in your own colours. And then it goes on to say bodies are meticulously prepared before final finish is applied. Before assembly, all pressed steel components are given extensive anti-rust treatment. The body shell is dipped in waste level in corrosion resistant primer and the body sills with drainage slots are sprayed internally with an anti-corrosion compound. And it's worth remembering that CF body protection started on the drawing board. Throughout it has been designed with anti-corrosion in mind. I guess that's another thing to think about. Which rusted more, a Bedford CF or a 70s Transit? And it talks about a little bit about professional service and then obviously leasing options as well. And that's where we'll finish it today. Any memories of the Bedford Sea, please do jot that in the comments, though. Uh, more uh, programs to come, of course. Next episode is Ford Fridays. What Ford we will have, you'll have to wait and see. <laughs> but for now, we'll say please do like and subscribe. We'll see you very soon. Take care and goodbye.